What's up guys, I'm Dykate, and this is the first episode of 12 Up, a brand new project of mine, a brand new web series, where each episode I'll be examining 12 intriguing subjects from the wide world of video games. Be it mysteries, glitches or easter eggs, to fun facts or lost and obscure games, if it's interesting, I'll be covering it. Probably. Warning. This episode contains spoilers for Final Fantasy VII, which, if you haven't played yet, you really should. With that out of the way, let's begin. 1. Final Fantasy VII – The Ancient's Cave If you're like me, then you adore Final Fantasy VII. It is, without a doubt, my favourite game of all time, and always will be, for good reason. And the many mysteries and secrets hidden within have only ever fueled my love for it. One of the latter that stands out to me in particular, however, is the mystifyingly unreachable cave, dubbed by fans as the Ancient's Cave, that can be found in Coral Valley just before the Forgotten Capital. Upon entering the area, you'll see a short path leading to a seemingly climbable vine hanging from a ledge, just outside the cave's entrance. However, the vine simply cannot be climbed, nor the cave entered, as revealed by the game's assist button though it has been discovered via exploration of the game's files that a walk mesh does exist on the cave's ledge, confirming that it was, at one point, intended to be accessible. So what was the cave for then? We still don't know for sure, and it's unlikely we ever will, since, as of this recording, Square have never given any kind of official explanation about it. There have been a bunch of theories as to the cave's purpose, most notably that it may have originally played some part in the long-rumoured Resurrection of Eris particularly as it is found so close to her resting place. The most likely answer, however, is that the cave was originally intended to be either A, one of the game's materia caves, of which there are four in the final game, this is backed up by the fact that a number of materia were cut from the game prior to release, or B, a passage between Coral Valley and the ancient forest near Cosmo Canyon, this is backed up by the way in which the game's field files are ordered. Whatever the case, this cave will likely continue to perplex Final Fantasy fans for years to come, and it's doubtful that we ever will truly know the full story behind it. 2. The Neverhood – Hall of Records If you've played through 1996's classic claymation point-and-click adventure The Neverhood, then you'll no doubt remember the particularly tedious 38 screen long Hall of Records. This massive hall, consisting of a continuous wall of text, must be traversed to complete the game making it an area that many people recall with frustration, myself included. But did you know that a hidden easter egg can be found if you walk the length of the hall with the lights off? Doing so reveals a small inscription in the bottom left corner of the screen that reads M. Lorenzen, that is Mark Lorenzen, who worked as an artist for the Neverhood, and who also co-wrote the extensive texts found within the Hall of Records. 3. Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped – Japan Exclusive FMVs of the handful of changes made to Crash Bandicoot 3 for its Japanese release, with regional changes being a fairly common practice in the industry, normally as the result of cultural differences, the thing that stands out the most is the addition of five pre-rendered FMVs, each accessible after defeating one of the game's bosses. These Japan-exclusive FMVs range from CGI animations to live-action clips, and even include a short documentary on Australia, and despite their seemingly low-budget appearance, make for an interesting footnote in the game's history. 4. Necrobius, released in 2014 Necrobius is an obscure, mind-bending point-and-click puzzle game in which a government agency has tasked you with infiltrating the disembodied brain of the titular Professor Necrobius in order to uncover the secrets and mysteries he left behind. The game, created by Daniel Auld, was originally set for a 1996 release, although said release never came to fruition save for a short demo that was released a year earlier, and the game ultimately fell into obscurity. That was until 2014, when some random guy on the internet, I don't know, who cares, contacted Mr. Old, who was not only kind enough to provide him with a completable beta copy of the game, along with nearly 50 pages of production documentation, but also gave him permission to share said beta around online, from which the footage you are now seeing has been taken. If you're curious about Necrobius, or if this type of game appeals to you in general, definitely check it out. Besides the fact that you can get it for free, it really is, in my opinion, a diamond in the rough when it comes to unreleased, or should I say, previously unreleased games. 5. PlayStation – Fearful Harmony and Personified Fear With the PS1 holding the title of the first console I ever owned, 
I can safely say that, had I encountered the following two boot up glitches as a youngster, I would have been thoroughly unnerved, and it would seem that I'm not the only one. Dubbed by PlayStation fans as Fearful Harmony and Personified Fear respectively, these two system startup errors result in off-putting sounds and images rarely ever produced by the console. Although these glitches are notoriously hard to trigger, involving the installation of mod chips and the attempted playback of certain non-PS1 discs, the fact remains that a significant number of people would have encountered and been freaked out by these as children, and as such, they have gone on to garner something of a cult status. Six, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, The Shrink. The Shrink, aka the Guardian Angel, is a cut character from the Oddworld universe, apparently having played an integral role in an upcoming storyline that was ultimately abandoned. While unused in the games themselves, the Shrink does make an appearance in one of the first game's FMVs in the form of an Oddworld ad, unlockable by freeing all 99 Mudarkins on the PS1 version. To date, the Shrink has still not appeared in any Oddworld games, though a higher resolution and slightly different version of this commercial was released from Oddworld Inhabitants archives in 2012. 7. Bionic Commando. You'll just have to fuck it. Capcom's 2009 Bionic Commando contains a rather hilarious easter egg that can be found during the boss battle with the Mohole. Upon first encountering the Mohole, you are told... Spencer, there's no way out. You'll just have to fight it. My pleasure. However, after losing to the Mohole a few times, a slightly different line will be delivered. Spencer, there's no way out. You'll just have to fuck it. Um. Um, indeed. 8. I have no mouth and I must scream. Cut content. Harlan Ellison's 1995 I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, based on Ellison's 1967 short story of the same name, is a point and click horror adventure game that is today considered a cult classic. One ongoing point of interest for fans of the game has been a short demo clip seen in a 1995 episode of British TV show Games Master, in which several differences from the final game can be seen, most notably, and perhaps controversially of all, a scene in which Benny is shown eating a live baby, albeit silhouetted. Still, I'm pretty sure I know why that one was cut. 9. Mountain King, Glitch Heaven Mountain King for the Atari 2600 is a fun little exploration game that tasks the player with searching a diamond mine and a temple for a golden crown, the retrieval of said crown being the game's main goal. Simplistic though it may look, there was once a whole other side of this game that players rarely got to see. Widely known about these days, however, is Mountain King's so-called Glitch Heaven, accessible by performing a very specific set of jumps. Once there, the ladders take you through a confusing environment that seemingly continues on and on, yet ultimately leads nowhere. However, due to prior exploration of the game, an in-depth map was eventually created and posted online, showing the vastness of Glitch Heaven, and also bringing to light the existence of two mysterious ghost-like figures. Spooky. 10. California Speed. Creepy Billboard. Prepare for one of the creepiest hidden messages in a video game ever. In the 1999 Nintendo 64 port of arcade racer California Speed, go to the map Mojave Desert. After a short time, an out of place looking billboard will begin fading in from the distance. Upon closer inspection, you will see that it reads, Sometimes, God takes mummies and puppies away, and sometimes, just sometimes, I do. The billboard's presence was eventually elaborated on by Morgan Goddard, who worked as a texture artist for the game. In a recent interview, he revealed that the port was the team's first project directly out of school. As such, quote unquote dumb decisions were made, one of which was evidently creating a dummy texture so out of place that it couldn't possibly be mistaken for a real texture, and then accidentally leaving that texture in the finished product. Whoops. 11. Pokemon Gen 1, The Truck. If you're a 90s kid like me, then you should need no introduction to the immensely popular Pokemon games, in this case the first generation specifically, Red, Yellow and Blue. 
And if you played any of those games, then there's also no doubt that you've heard of, and or witnessed firsthand the truck behind the SSN. For those unfamiliar, however, allow me to explain. Upon entering the ship via the dock, it is possible for the player to complete the necessary onboard tasks and leave the ship without it departing for good, which is what would normally happen if you left the ship via the exit. This is accomplished by making your character black out aboard the ship, sending you back to a nearby Pokemon Center. From here, if you progress the game far enough to the point at which you have a Pokemon that knows Surf, you can take them back to the dock and swim around the ship. On a small block of land on the right hand side sits a mysterious truck. Speculation about this truck has run rife over the years, and there were many popular theories and rumours as to the truck's purpose. The most popular of which is that the truck could be moved by having a Pokemon use Strength. Underneath it, you would then find a Mew. However, this simply wasn't the case, and the only way of obtaining Mew in those games, apart from having attended one of the special Pokemon events at which they were given out, is to use an in-depth glitch to have one spawn in the wild. It's also worth noting that a seemingly useless set of keys can be obtained at Celadon's game corner. Were these originally the keys to the truck? Maybe. It's never been made clear by the game's creators as to the truck's actual purpose. Though most people usually conclude that it was either an easter egg of sorts, or that the area around the ship had been used as a place to store additional game data. Funnily enough, the truck is present in the Gen 1 remakes, Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red. Will the mystery behind the truck ever truly be revealed? Maybe not, but if there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that it will never be forgotten. 12. Medieval, Morton the Earthworm To close out the show today, another all-time favourite of mine, the 1998 PS1 classic, Medieval. Morton the Earthworm is a largely unused character from Medieval who was originally set to have his own side-scrolling level in which he would have to steal a key from an abbey of mad monks in order for Dan to progress. The prelude to this level, in the form of an FMV, is actually included on the game's disc, though it is never triggered by the game. Instead, it is accessible only through a cheat code. But this wasn't Morton's only appearance. He is also briefly shown in the Jabberwocky FMV, and was included in commercials for the game, via a snippet from the previous video. Ultimately, the level was scrapped, with the game moving straight on to the Inside the Asylum level instead. Well, that's a wrap on Episode 1. What do you think? Are there any subjects you'd like to see me cover in the future? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, also please let me know by liking and or subscribing. That would be super appreciated. That's it for now, I'm Dyke8 and until next time, see ya!